This is Perspectivas Latinas, a community service of CAN TV. I'm your host, Juan Carlos Hernandez. Our show today is about Mujeres Latinas en Acción, an organization that has worked with and on behalf of Latinas since the early 1970s. Our guests are Maria Pesqueira, the president and CEO, Ana Soto, an advocate with a Latina leadership program, and Maritza Rocha, uh, the director of the youth programs. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Well, thanks for coming out and um, being part of the show. I know you've done great work in the community, and it's really exciting to have you all here. Uh, let's start off by talking about you individually and what you do with the organization. Okay. My name's Ana. Mm -hmm. So I've been working with Mujeres almost seven years. Seven uh, years. Yes. I mm -hmm. actually started working in Mujeres. Before that, I was an intern and then mm -hmm. after a position in, in the agency. Currently, I am working for the Latina Leadership Program, and but in the same way, I also collaborate with the uh, youth programs. Mm -hmm. So I facilitate Latina, facilitate Latina leadership groups for adult women. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I also facilitate mother-daughter groups, mm -hmm. and I provide sexual health education to our youth with our after-school programs. Um, so those, those are the things that I do, and I feel really passionate right. about doing it. You can certainly hear that. and uh, like. Um, I think we were speaking before the show, um, the programs kind of intermingle between two and each other, right? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Maria, uh, well, tell uh, us about yourself and how long you've been with the organization. Sure, uh, mm -hmm. Maria del Socorro Pesqueira, I've been there for a while, 13 years, so it'll be mm -hmm. 14 this year. And uh, time flies when you're having fun. There's never a boring day at Mujeres. Mm -hmm. um, what do I do? I, I have the pleasure of uh, spearheading, leading, working with our board of directors and our staff on a day-to-day -to, -day to fulfill our mission. And mm -hmm. it's really to empower Latinas and their families through leadership development, like I mentioned, mm -hmm. parent training, mm -hmm. youth services, and crisis intervention. Um, our, uh, at the core of the work that we do, there's advocacy, uh, because we believe that, um, of course, it's important to provide the services, but mm -hmm. um, on the services that we offer that are, that are um, related to crisis intervention, What's at the root of the of, mm -hmm. of the problems, and mm -hmm. and what can we do, um, and um, how can we give the voice to the women and families we work with to make changes mm -hmm. uh, to address the root um, right, and, of the issues? And part of that involves studies, right? You've helped um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. guide studies or conducted studies through Mujeres, right? Yes, absolutely. We have mm -hmm. the Latina Portrait Series, mm -hmm. and those could be found on our webpage. Uh, we've done series at, on the status of Latinas, the uh, population, uh, issues in reproductive health, mm -hmm. health and Latinas and their families overall, mm -hmm. um, issues related to um, the Violence Against Women Act. Uh, mm -hmm. We did another study that's specific to Latinas and mental health. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, the most current one was uh, taking was a collaborative looking at domestic workers, mm -hmm. uh, Latinas and domestic workers, uh, and an impact on the economy. Okay, we'll definitely get more in, in, into more of that in a, in a bit, but let's hear from, sure. from Maritza. How you doing? Mm -hmm. My name is Maritza Rocha, mm -hmm. and I'm the director of the youth programs. I've been with Mujeres for about uh, a year and three months now. Mm -hmm. Um, I also started as an intern there a few years ago, um, actually probably a little longer than that. Mm -hmm. But um, I came upon the position that was open and I went ahead and went for it. Um, I have a passion working with uh, youth, um, experience with working with youth uh, previously as well. And uh, a little bit about our program is uh, we try to expose our Latinas, our young Mm -hmm. Latinas mm -hmm. to as much um, as we can that's possibly positive um, within the community as well as career development. We do have anti-violence uh, programs that we offer. We have uh, anti-bullying curriculum as well and we also try to set a therapeutic setting for them as well as have a very fun environment uh, for our teens. Right now we currently have a few programs running uh, within our within our services. Uh, we also offer uh, programs for 6 to 12 year olds, boys and girls, and for female Latinas ages 14 to 18, and also for young young men, young, young boys, men well. yes. We mm -hmm. just started that, uh, mm -hmm. we just launched the program. Um, curriculum is called Joven Noble, and it's bringing it back. It's more of um, bringing back that uh, cultura. Mm -hmm. as well as respect those core values that we were taught as kids that we sometimes don't have mm -hmm. the time to even think about teaching as well as uh, advocating or enforcing those uh, values that we we normally have ingrained with uh, within us uh, okay, from great. a very young age. We'll definitely get into more of that but for now let's hear about 
the history of Mujeres. Uh, give us some of uh, a brief history, <laughs> as brief <laughs> as you can make it. It's a very rich history and mm -hmm. a very important history in our community. Sure. Well, we certainly stand on the shoulders of some amazing women uh, who came together in 1973 and saw a need mm -hmm. uh, to provide culturally relevant services in our language um, to address the social needs. You know, mm -hmm. at that uh, particular time, there were very few women in mm -hmm. the field of social services mm -hmm. um, in, in the human service arena, and um, and they worked to make that happen. Uh, so the uh, Mujer Latinas in Acción, the first program that we offered, interestingly enough, was working with youth. Mm. Uh, and then we went and, and did other partnerships. A lot of the work that we've done through the years mm -hmm. has also been about not just referring, but partnering with um, organizations uh, in our community that can strengthen the needs uh, of the folks that we serve. Okay, and um, during that time, you also expanded you know, to your current headquarters, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started um, in uh, in a storefront on, on 18th Street, mm -hmm. and um, in the um, early 80s, we acquired a building on on uh, 17th Street, and we outgrew that mm -hmm. fairly quickly. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, we now that is our all use facility, and mm -hmm. we um, had a capital campaign to. Uh, open the space where we're current where our main office is currently at mm -hmm. on 21st place we also have an office in the western suburbs mm -hmm. uh, in North Riverside and that mm -hmm. serves the western suburbs and people ask well are there Latinas in North Riverside <laughs> and, and, and I say well yes but it was uh, very strategic to, to be where we're at we're right. Uh, right across the street from a mall and as we know in the western suburbs um, Transportation can be a challenge, so we're, we're right in between the Stevenson and the Eisenhower, very close to the Metra, uh, as well as a bus that stops mm -hmm. across the street at the mall. Oh wow! So and, you, and there are a, that's where uh, the Latino population has grown, right, out in the suburbs. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the Latino, absolutely, Juan Carlos, mm -hmm. the, the population um, in the city of Chicago has not decreased, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's continued to grow, right. but in the western suburbs, it's grown. Um, in, in incredibly fast. Well, there are now more Latinos living outside of the city of Chicago than there are in the city of Chicago. So wow. the demand for our services mm -hmm. did not decrease in our in, in mm -hmm. our Chicago office, right. but it was also, um, but it kept growing with the demand for services from uh, the outlying suburbs. And so we thought to really address the issues and serve our Latinas and their families mm -hmm. better, uh, we opened up the office in North River Side. We offer everything that we offer in the Chicago office, other than the um, the after school programming for youth, we also have the mother daughter mm -hmm. uh, services that we mm -hmm. offer there. Well, wow, it sounds exciting. Um, and what I hear is key to your growth is the involvement of young people. Uh, mm -hmm. You were born that way. It's um, still a, an integral part of all that you do. Mm -hmm. uh, Maritza, can you tell me more about uh, mm -hmm. working with, with the youth? You work with girls and with boys and young women and young men. Yes. Mm -hmm. So our program is uh, structured with a lot of different activities mm -hmm. um, and groups. Um, more so, it's, it's a safe environment for our teens mm -hmm. and our young kids. Um, we're smack in the middle of Pilsen. Um, there's still a lot of crime in the area. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we have a space um, for our youth, mm -hmm. or a space where they could come in and express themselves, um, as well as uh, gain hands-on experience on uh, certain subjects that are not as offered um, in our community, such as STEM programs, mm -hmm. uh, health and sciences. What um, is STEM? Tell uh, us what the STEM program is so for our right, viewers. We're, we're trying to collaborate uh, Right now, we're not STEM certified, but we mm -hmm. are trying to collaborate. And what that what STEM program is, it, it brings more awareness to our to Latinos and Latinas, and it's uh, mm -hmm. basically engineering, uh, doctor programs, or doctorate programs. So there are fields or careers that go um, into those types of fields. Okay, and. Um Science, technology, engineering, and math. That's yes. what STEM stands for. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did um, I'm still curious as to how you involve young men because you know, you know mujeres and obviously the, the focus should be on mujeres, but uh, how and why involve young men? Um, that's that's a great question. Um, currently, right now, mm -hmm. um, the, the just the crime rate, violence, uh, mm -hmm. Latino Latinos dropping out of school, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. really high. Um, and for us right now, it's really important to bring them 
into the center and mm -hmm. let them know that they're welcomed and also mm -hmm. that they're a big part of our community. Okay. Um, with that said alone, um, we're losing our boys to such you know, uh, crime rates and things like that that are happening. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we have enough programs for them where they can develop, mm -hmm. where they can feel uh, welcomed, as well as express or advocate um, mm -hmm. for certain issues that they believe in. Um, but more importantly, we want to create um, an anti-violence safe zone for mm -hmm. them. And mm -hmm. also bring back, as I mentioned, um, La Cultura. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me more about that. What do you mean by La Cultura? For, um, just for us in particular in our youth center, uh, our mission here at Mujeres is to reach out and our, our mission again is to empower um, Latinas as well as their families mm -hmm. and youth. So by empowering young males and females in particular um, brings that awareness into the community. Mm -hmm. And once they start learning or having the tools to learn and, and start going out to the community and being more, uh, I guess, better products or of mm -hmm. society, mm -hmm. that um, teaching them basic skills is something that we sometimes don't do at home. And a lot mm -hmm. of times they don't, mm -hmm. you know, they don't have somewhere, as I'm, I keep mentioning, safe zone and safe facilities because we don't really have that many uh, programs offered to Latinos. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so what happened a few years ago, mm -hmm. two years ago, um, we started focus groups. Okay. Um, and, and actually ending uh, last year. And the focus groups uh, w was taking a look at um, where are the gaps, what are the mm -hmm. needs, um, how were the women and, and men we were serving, because we have fathers in our parenting mm -hmm. programs, mm -hmm. um, and what did they think? And what was really interesting, what came back um, was, uh, and they kept bubbling up, that women in, in our programs, especially single head of household women, were saying, mm -hmm. thank you, Mm -hmm. for helping me with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the services you're offering me, but I need help with my son. Mm -hmm. And then if we start mm -hmm. looking at statistics in our community, mm -hmm. and while um, we are celebrating the fact that our, our young women are graduating from high mm -hmm. school, entering college at, at faster rates, still not um, obviously where they need to be, but right. certainly um, uh, getting their young women entering uh, the technology fields at a higher rate than many mm -hmm. uh, of even their counterparts, we're losing our boys, mm. right? Mm -hmm. We're losing them to the criminal justice system. Mm. We're losing them to um, s the streets, and mm -hmm. they're dropping out of mm -hmm. high school. They're also not graduating from college at the same levels mm -hmm. as their um, Latina hermanas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it is not um, then odd for the woman, again, our mission is to empower Latinas and their families, and our boys, and our, our partners, our husbands, uh, our uncles, our brothers are part of our family. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if there is that gap, um, and, and our moms were saying, you know, this mother-daughter, the leadership program that you're offering is helping us. Can you offer something similar? Mm -hmm. And that's what Joven Noble is about, mm -hmm. that support system that they're asking for. And how have these uh, young men responded? And their mothers or <laughs> their caretakers? It was very interesting. Yesterday mm -hmm. we had our first session. Mm -hmm. And it was it's my first time visiting a group with mother-son. Um, and I was kind of interested. I'm like, how are they going to react? Right. Mm -hmm. And when you're working with youth, you mm -hmm. have to get down to where they are at. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. make jokes here and there, right? So, and mm -hmm. understand their lingo, because they have a specific lingo. So they were very receptive. Mm -hmm. When I would ask, like, how many of your parents actually talk to you? And mm -hmm. I'm like, but I really talk to you, not yell at you, not tell you what to do. Talk down to you, uh, order you around. Uh, right. Exactly. So they were like, okay, she understands where we're coming from. <laughs> so it was very interesting. Um, and then at the same time, we talk about how we really don't, Manisa's saying a safe space. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I think at home, we don't create a space for them to open up. Right. Mm -hmm. It's more like, here's your responsibility. Go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. And we ask uh, our daughters, how are you doing? How's your day? the man perspective, I don't think is there. We don't necessarily think like, oh, they're fine. And because mm -hmm. it does have, we bring a lot of cultural values. Mm -hmm. Machismo, for example, right, right. like. Tough, you know, mm -hmm. toughen up, you know, you, you should be able to handle this. You yes. Know. Right. Mm -hmm. No, and um, it's really interesting. And um, how, it's, it's all part of your Latina leadership. Is that where this was born from, this idea, or? Mm -hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. It really stemmed from the women in, in, mm -hmm. in our, all of our programs. So okay. it was not just mm -hmm. in our Latina leadership program. Mm -hmm. It was women that were provide, getting ser other services, whether it was our parenting program. It was even fathers mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that, that, mm -hmm. that are part of our parenting program mm -hmm. kept saying, you know, we need something more for 
for our sons. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the, the fact is many of the um, individuals we serve at Mujeres, the majority of them are women. Mm -hmm. A good number of them are single head of household mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. for many reasons, right. whether separation uh, or, right. or uh, deportation of their partners. Mm -hmm. um, for so many reasons, right? And so the idea is um, that you know, they, they need the support mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, we don't want to lose many more of our boys. We want them to be part, they're part of our future. Right, mm -hmm. and I think w one of the things I hear from you also is you're sensitizing them to um, being better men. Yes. Right? Definitely. Right. Tell me a little, about, a little bit about that. <clears throat> um, the curriculum that we have um, implemented is mm -hmm. called Joven Noble, mm -hmm. and it has values that go uh, back to, again, uh, respect, mm -hmm. how to talk to a woman, how to treat a woman, how to respect yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to, uh, again, very, very simple, you know, uh, trainings or teachings um, that we've taught our young boys. Um, and we want to make sure that um, they also advocate for mm -hmm. themselves. They, we want to give them tools. We want to make sure that they're prepared. Mm -hmm. um, as Maria mentioned, um, they do graduate from high school, but then they go to college and then they drop out. Mm -hmm. So they may not have be exposed or they may not even think that they have that mm -hmm. self-worth or mm -hmm. that anyone's going to see them any different. There's a lot of stereotypes out there for Latinos. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, if you pull up uh, in Google and put uh, Latino men, you usually get gangbangers. Wow. Um, and, and for mm -hmm. us, we want to make sure that we're sending that message to them. That is not you. You do not need to believe what society is creating for you to believe. Mm -hmm. And for us, that's the most important thing. We want to make sure that our young men don't start believing these things because mm -hmm. you can put so many messages out there mm -hmm. for them and then you start believing that this mm -hmm. is, you know, who you're going to be or who you're supposed to become because society sets that for you. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we're teaching them at the center. And again, we have, you know, a lot of different um, uh, assistance and a lot of tools, a lot of uh, workshops that we create for them to make sure that they're ready, giving them the tools. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not going to mm -hmm. be able to change every single young right. man out there right. or every single young woman, but we want to make sure that it's a stepping stone for them. Everything starts with mujeres. We mm -hmm. believe that. And um, definitely, that's definitely <laughs> what we want to do. <laughs> Sounds awesome. One, one of the threads also, and um, my own experience with your organization and hearing you now is leadership. One of the threads yes. that just runs through all that, all that you do is mm -hmm. uh, empowering women to see themselves as leaders. And and you work in the Latina leadership uh, program. Mm -hmm. Tell me how that. Uh, tell me about it, and if you know a lot of the history, tell us about that too. Actually, we're very proud to announce that we're starting a new leadership, a new leadership component. And mm -hmm. what does it mean? We're actually going to go ahead and facilitate um, groups, but the focus of our groups is to create active leaders in the community. Mm -hmm. So our participants are going to come and either with their own passion about any topic that they want to. It could be immigration, it could be reproductive justice, it could mm -hmm. be education, and they're going to be able to go ahead and foster mm -hmm. their passion into a project so they're going to wow. go ahead and design mm -hmm. a plan how they w want to overcome it can be a social problem they're going to go ahead come to the program get trainings on mm -hmm. a weekly basis so we're going to have a this program is going to run for 35 weeks 35 weeks yes wow so we do need uh, a community individuals mm -hmm. you might see it might seem like it's wow like it's a whole commitment no no i mean that's it's <laughs> awesome they should be getting yeah. college credit for it or something. that's right that's right, right. Mm -hmm. that's I, the next step yes. <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when like, i how do we get educational credit for it yes. yeah. when I, I facilitate the groups mm -hmm. it seems like that because we want to integrate a woman to this country mm -hmm. we want them to learn um how the systems work mm -hmm. how can they themselves be in the system mm -hmm. but at the same time better themselves so sometimes they come here to the pro they come to the program because they feel that they have very strong um, skills but mm -hmm. sometimes there's limits within mm -hmm. so they know they can do it but they're missing that little piece like I want to believe in myself but at the same time it's because society doesn't allow that leadership component to right. for us to raise our boys. So in the mm -hmm. program, they're going to go ahead and receive different workshops. And then different workshops, we're going to learn about how the um, political system works, the importance of voting, the importance of getting engaged in your community. Mm -hmm. So w within that, too, we come to, there's going to be different women coming from different communities. And when we think about communities, we think about, oh, yeah, my little community. But at the same time, there's a bigger picture. Right. 
So the uh, women are going to be learning about how each community is interconnected, mm -hmm. and at the same time, community can be more than just a location. At the same time, well, you could be have be linked with people from across the world, actually, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And more important, they're going to learn about how they can benefit from their community, but how the community needs them to go ahead and. Be and uh, empower the community. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think that that's the other thing. Parents sometimes feel like their uh, hands are tied. They can't do nothing about things that are going around in the children's home or in their children's school. Mm -hmm. And the program, they're going to be able to see, no, you're very, you, you love to speak up about issues. Right. And advocating for themselves. Mm. That's one of the um, strong components of Latina leadership is once you know how everything works, you can go ahead and make this informed decisions. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and empower other compañeras. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, that's so important. Uh, I just, I, um, you were making me remember like, you empower people, you're empowering a lot of women who may not be familiar with, with how the systems work. And I think about my mother and when I was growing up, the difficulty of her engaging with people at my school and, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and yeah. how there wasn't anybody to support her there. And um, cer uh, certainly my mother's a leader, you know, she's a leader in our family and in our community. and but she didn't know how the system worked. Do you guys have any examples of how a woman has come through the Latino, Latina leadership program and um, how she's um, connected with that part of her and gone out into the community and made a big change? We definitely have key leaders in our agency, volunteers, mm -hmm. who volunteers. have become key stars. Mm -hmm. We have right now Promotoras de Salud. So they actually mm -hmm. went through the program a um, couple of years ago. And they feel really passionate about getting the boys out there about the different services about the agency, but more than important right now about the importance of women taking care of their own health. Mm -hmm. So now our Promotoras de Salud are becoming the boys of mujeres. They're going into the community. Mm -hmm. And these are tools they, they got from the community. So they go out there, do presentations, mm -hmm. And at the same time, they're like, no, tú puedes. Si yo lo hice, you can do it. Mm -hmm. sure. You mm -hmm. also could find women who are now head of uh, parent school councils mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in within our high school systems. Um, I have been at events and women come up to me and say, mm -hmm. I am a graduate of Latina leadership and I'm now uh, working at such organization mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. within the community and this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Certainly, they have gone out to do anything from issues related to education. Um, they've gone out to um, start their own business. They've mm -hmm. gone out to wow. do various things and figure out how to navigate them. Mm -hmm. But what um, what will be happening with the, the, the program as we have it now is that we're not only looking to have them become engaged and understand how the system works, but mm -hmm. really look at themselves as that they are part of, they, they have power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so right. not only navigating it, no, right. how to be a part of that power, how to take mm -hmm. that power to make things change, mm -hmm. to, to make change happen. Right. Um, so while we've gone, and I, and I say that there's some incredibly dynamic leaders, um, mm -hmm. the, the, what's, what we're looking at now is the women who have made a change, mm -hmm. whether it was in their, their family, their community, their school systems and, and their area and, or an issue area. Well, uh, and you mentioned a, an interesting word to me, uh, and I think to a lot of people in our community, because uh, so many in our community start their own businesses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How how is Latina leadership becoming more engaged in that area? So we actually have our sister program, which is um, mm -hmm. Women in Transition. They actually have a group now, Empresarios del Futuro. Mm -hmm. So women come and get um, different courses on how to start your own business. But at the same time, business plan and everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. okay. um, business planning. They get financial literacy. At the same time, what are the resources available to them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we're finding is that many of our women come in as entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and they just don't call themselves entrepreneurs, <laughs> right? Right. right. Uh, if you look at our tias, our moms, the women in our community, they're selling. Um, products, whether it's mm -hmm. Avon or Jafra or Tupperware parties, or they're making tamales or pozole, mm -hmm. and they're selling right. sewing for for, mm -hmm. for family members. Um, and what we were finding, and you know, is certainly there are women who have um, been engaged at, in selling a product mm -hmm. uh, and didn't see themselves in, as entrepreneurs. Right. We want them to take the next step, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. create that business plan. What kind of resources are there available? And we have women who um, have uh, looked at their current business. Like there's a woman who has sold tamales, mm -hmm. and she continues to sell tamales, but she's doing it in a way, when she created her strategy, she wanted to have more time with her children. Mm -hmm. And while she was out in the elements, uh, outside of the mm -hmm. school, uh, she now schedules with people. She's got customers who will call her 
and she will deliver tamales to you. Wow. Uh, and they're, do you have her card or anything? <laughs> we sure do. And she makes the best uh, corn, uh, corn tamales. They're, they're amazing. My husband loves them. Um, so it's the idea of how do you take your business to the next level? We have mm -hmm. a woman who is a personal shopper, grocery shopper, mm -hmm. uh, sort of mm -hmm. like I call her the Latina peapot, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she, you can order from her different products, including a guajillo peppers, right, and or uh, chile morron, and she'll know not she to know. give you a chile serrano, right? <laughs> right. Um, so you, for especially for women who are busy, right, uh, right, and right. Um, and just we can call her up and say, could you? These are the things I need for the week. Could you do my grocery shopping? And she'll bring it to your home. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to change, we're, we're running out of time uh, for this program. I want to change uh, the topic just a bit. You also mentioned advocacy at the very beginning uh, and mm -hmm. how you're very active in um, speaking up and speaking with and for, uh, for Latinas. Tell us about how that works. Do you go downstate? Do you go to Washington? How does that, um, do you go to um, sure. City Hall? Tell us about that. So it, it it happens at, at all mm -hmm. different levels, right? Mm -hmm. All of our Very staff, briefly, we're, we're uh, running out of time. Well, we're involved at the mm -hmm. local, state, and federal level mm -hmm. through various coalitions, but also through some of the training that includes the advocacy training that we do for our 40 hour mm -hmm. in domestic violence and sexual assault, having people know how to also become engaged and make a difference. Okay. We also help um, people become citizens okay. and registering for them to vote. As and well. you also involve youth in this? Yes, we do. We have uh, involved them for especially reproductive rights mm -hmm. and any rights that have to do with youth. Okay, great. Um, sorry we kind of rushed you there. We're, we're just out of time. And, but no, it's great. It's great to hear all that you're doing for our women and our communities and, and their families. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Thank Thank you it's great to be here. Perspectivas Latinas is a community service of CAN-TV. If your nonprofit organization would like to work with CAN-TV, call 312-738-1400 and ask for nonprofit services. Tune into Perspectivas Latinas for local issues and concerns every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. on CAN-TV 21. I'm Juan Carlos Hernandez. Thank you for joining us.